check, check. Good morning, gentlemen. This uh, hearing is here by call to order. The chair would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, our distinguished colleague, Senator Amy Marcos. Good morning, ma'am. <clears throat> Who's attending virtually. So the chair hereby declares the presence of the quorum. Also, the chair acknowledges the presence of Colestan Secretary Charlie Galvez. Secretary of the Pres Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, accompanied by Undersecretary Wilven Mayor and Undersecretary Camilo Cascolan. Good morning, sirs. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Today, we will discuss or hear the different uh, or four House Concurrent Resolution namely or resolutions namely number 12 number 13 number 14 number 15. this is to concur with proclamation number 1090 of the president of the philippines dated february 5 also proclamation number 1091 dated also dated february 5 <clears throat> proclamation number 1092 proclamation number 1093 As an opening statement, our hearing this morning is called in the spirit of reconciliation with the message of peace. It is of great weight and importance and importance that we hear the measures concurring with the grant of amnesty, especially in the foreground of over foreground of over 7,600 prospective applicants who may be willing to return to the fold of the law and live in peace as members of our society. We understand by now that the attainment of lasting peace has been a long and arduous journey for both the government and our brethren who chose to pursue peace through revolt and opposition against the government. Amnesty has always been a tool for national reconciliation and an act of compassion. 
The second paragraph of Section 19, Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution provides, and I quote, he, referring to the President, shall also have the power to grant amnesty with the concurrence of a majority of all the members of the Congress. <clears throat> Pursuant to the President's clemency powers provided by the Constitution, <clears throat> President Rodrigo Roa Duterte issued proclamation numbers 1090, 1091, 1092, and 1093 to grant amnesty to members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, Moro National Liberation Front, MNLF, Revolutionaryong Partido Manggagawa, Pilipinas, <coughs> Revolutionary Proletarian Army, Alex Bongkayo Brigade, RPM, PRPA, ABP, and the Communist Terrorist Group, and Executive Order Number 125 <coughs> for the creation of the National Amnesty Commission. <coughs> the House of Representatives has already given their concurrence <coughs> to the said proclamation. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pursuant to the mandate given to us by the Constitution, this hearing is therefore now called to order to discuss and deliberate whether the Senate should likewise give its concurrence to the said proclamations. So with that, let's start the hearing. Also, <clears throat> the Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Deputy Director General Rufino Lopez Jr. attending virtually. Under Secretary Reynaldo Mapago, Under Secretary Cesariano, Captain Ferdinand Buscato of the Philippine Navy. <clears throat> Presenting Secretary Eduardo Año, Alex Alex Asek Alexander Macario, and Assistant Secretary Manuel Felix. Yes, sir. Also Brigadier General Sermi Ayuyao, Judge, the Judge Advocate General, General. Colonel Zaldi Joneta, representing Chairperson of the Commission of Human Rights, Attorney Gerwin, Gerwin Galiba, and Attorney jo, Jomaher Azalan. That's it. So, yes, Secretary Galvez, would you like to uh, state now your prelim preliminary statement? Yes, sir. To the Honorable uh, Senator Pampilo Ping Lacson, sir, the chairperson of the Senate Committee on the National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, and the other honorable members of the committee, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Please allow me to extend my gratitude to the Senate Committee for accommodating our presentation on amnesty. Mr. Chair, the amnesty program is one of the most in important integral components of the comprehensive peace process under EO number three, series of 2001. It is part of the fourth part to peace of programs for reconciliation, reintegration, into the mainstream society and rehabilitation, whose main objective is to address the legal status of former rebels. The amnesty proclamation issued by the president are products of peace agreements and of programs of the government to reintegrate former rebels into mainstream society. Mr. Chair, the grant of amnesty to these former rebels and combatants will provide them not a just a new start in life, but ultimately secure their place in society. We humbly appeal for the concurrence of the Senate to realize the meaningful transformation of the former rebels and combatants into peaceful and productive citizens of the country, as the Senate Committee Chair said, an act of compassion. Again, thank you, Mr. Chair, and to the members of the committee for providing us a space and giving us your time to listen to our presentation of honesty. May I request, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, we, given, we be given a few minutes for the presentation to be given by ASEC Wilden Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Ito, Under Secretary ka. All right, sir. Sige. Please, Wilden, go ahead. Thank you, sir, for promoting me. Thank you, Mr. Chair and other honorable members to this committee. Good morning. Uh, the scope. Next slide. 
try to please. The scope of my presentation are the following, the peace agreements and programs, the legal basis, the amnesty program, and the amnesty commission. Mr. Chair and honorable members, as mentioned by Secretary Galvez, the amnesty program is one of the integral components of the comprehensive peace process under Executive Order No. 3, Series of 2001. It is part of the fourth path to peace of, of programs for reconciliation, reintegration into mainstream society and rehabilitation, which main objective is to address the legal status and security of former rebels. The amnesty proclamation issued by the, the, the president are products of peace agreements and programs of the government to reintegrate former rebels into mainstream society. Number one, the amnesty program under the MLF process is part of the commitment of the government under the comprehensive agreement on the Bang Samoro. Amnesty program under the MLF peace process is part of the commitment of the government pursuant to the 1996 final peace agreement. Number three, amnesty program under the RPMP, RPA, ABB peace process, 2000 peace agreement between the government of the Philippines and the RPMP, RPA, ABB. And number four, under Executive Order 70 series of 2018, the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict or NTFLK created 12 clusters or lines of effort, the Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program or ECLIP and Amnesty Program Cluster is one of these clusters in support of government's long-term quest for peace, reconciliation, and unity. On February 5, 2021, the President issued Executive Order Number 125, which created the National Amnesty Commission with succeeding proclamations Number 1090, 1091, 1092, and 1093, granting amnesty to members of MILF, MNLF, RPMP, RPA, ABB, and former rebels of the CTG. It is provided in Article 7, Section 19 of the 1987 Constitution that the President of the Philippines has the power to grant amnesty with the concurrence of a majority of all members of the Congress. Amnesty is defined as that which overlooks and obliterates the offense with which a person is charged, such that the person released by amnesty stands before the law, precisely as though he had committed no offense. Amnesty looks backward as if the accused never committed a crime. For the applications, any member of the MILF, MNLF, RPMP, RPA, ABB members, and former rebels of the CTG who has committed any act or omission in pursuit of their political belief, including those detained, charged, or convicted for such acts or omission may file for amnesty. Former rebels is understood to refer to one who was a former member of the CTG, who has surrendered to the government and renounced his rebellious activities, while CTG includes Communist Party of the Philippines, National Democratic Front, New People's Army, and their front organizations. Shown in the screen, Mr. Chair, are the enumeration of the crimes covered by the amnesty proclamations. Second slide, also the additional offenses covered. And on the next slide, presents Offenses not covered by the amnesty, such as kidnap or ransom, massacre, rape, other com crimes committed against chastity as defined in the revised penal code as amended, crimes committed for personal ends, violation of the Republic Act number 9165 or the Dangerous Drunk Act, grave violations of the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and those crimes identified by the United Nations that cannot be amnestied. To underscore the conditions of the grant of amnesty, Mr. Chair, let me enumerate the conditions. Number one, must have been committed on or before the date of activity of this proclamation. Number two, those who have already been granted amnesty under previous amnesty proclamations 
shall no longer qualify to apply for amnesty under this proclamation. Number three, those persons who applied for amnesty under previous proclamation, but those applications were not considered for having been made outside the regulatory period for filing may apply under this proclamation. The application must be in writing and under oath. The applicant must admit his guilt of the offense for which he is criminally liable and shall turn over whatever firearms or weapons and or explosives he or she may have been may have in her possession without incurring liability for illegal possession thereof. The amnesty program has a confidentiality clause and any testimony of the applicant as well as the witness and or any evidence presented shall not be used as evidence in any other proceeding where the amnesty is not an issue. The application period of the amnesty program is within one year from the effectivity of the proclamations, which shall take effect upon concurrence by a majority of all members of Congress. To implement the amnesty programs, the President issued Executive Order Number 125, dated February 5, 2021, for the creation of the National Amnesty Commission. The Amnesty Commission shall be primarily tasked with receiving and processing application for amnesty and determining whether the applicants are entitled to amnesty proclamations number 1090, 1091, 92, and 1093. The following are the powers and function of the Amnesty Commission to issue a certificate of amnesty to qualified applicants with approval of the President. Uh, Administer oaths, summon witnesses, and required production of documents by subpoena dos tecum. Promulgate rules and regulation. Call on any government office, body, agency, instrumentality, council, or commission to render assistance. Constitute the local amnesty boards and perform other functions. Shown on the screen are the members of and secretariat of the amnesty commission. The Amnesty Commission is composed of seven members, a chairperson, and two regular members, all appointed by the President. The following as ex official members, the Secretary of Justice, Secretary of National Defense, the Secretary of Interior and Local Government, and the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity. The Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity shall provide the Secretariat for the Commission. The grant of amnesty have the following effects. First, it extinguishes any and all criminal liability for the act subject to the amnesty grant. Second, it restores all civil and political rights suspended or lost by virtue of criminal conviction. And finally, amnesty does not remove the grantee's civil liability for injuries or damages caused to private persons. The estimated number of prospective applicants are as follows. Around 1,500 MILF members will be applying for amnesty, but the figure is expected to increase after the ongoing survey and validation being conducted by the implementing panels and as the parties proceed with the decommissioning of an estimated number of 40,000 MILF combatants. The projected applicants for amnesty from the MNLF is at around 5,000. These are target beneficiaries of the MNLF transformation program for fiscal year 2021 to 2022. An estimated 1,200 RPMP, RPA, ABB members are expected to avail of the amnesty and around 5,000 former rebels of the CTG are expected to avail of the amnesty. Mr. Chair, the honorable members of this committee, the grant of amnesty to former rebels and combatant will provide them less, not just a new start in life, but ultimately secure their place in society. We humbly appeal for the concurrence of the Senate to realize the meaningful transformation of former rebels into peaceful and productive citizens of the country. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to the members of the committee for providing us the space and giving us your time to listen to our presentation on amnesty 
Good morning. Thank you, ASEC uh, Mayor. Yes, any other? Yeah, question from the chair. Is uh, the uh, National Amnesty Commission fully organized with full staff complement? As we speak. So we, we are still awaiting for the concordance of the Congress. Uh, once the, this, is, this is already concord, uh, we already uh, submitted to the president the membership of the three, uh, three membership of the National Action Commission. Okay. Your, your... Well, is there a legal impediment in uh, organizing the National Amnesty Commission since Meron na issue na executive order, di ba? Yes, sir, but uh, we are still awaiting for the not, uh, not to be presumptive, uh, Your Honor, but uh, we will still wait uh, for the concurrence of the, yeah. both, uh, the, co the Congress and the Senate. Who said. Is there some kind of protocol that yes. you must wait for the concurrent, the concurrent uh, resolution? Yes, sir, uh, because uh, Meron... I think it will not be executory if uh, the Senate and the Congress is not uh, yet uh, finished no, in the concurrence, Mr. Mr. Chair. Even yung pag-organize lang ng... Uh, we already uh, organized you know, the, uh, uh, the different uh, uh, setup. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, we already recommended the membership of the chairman and uh, the, the two members and also the different uh, uh, organizations on the different tables, yeah. uh, the MILF, the MLF, uh, the CTG, and also uh, with the RPA, ABB, you, Mr. Chair. So you have not recommended a chairman yet? We already recommended, uh, Mr. Chair. And he has not been appointed yet? And he never to be appointed yet because uh, uh, I, I believe the president is yeah. waiting for the concurrence. Really? Yes, sir. So this, he's waiting. I'm just wondering, you know, can you simultaneous? Anyway, this is an easy resolution to pass, you know, yung yes, concurrent sir. resolution. Just one hearing, I think we can pass this. I'm just wondering why hindi pwede simultaneous para pagkapasa nito, pagka president, at least immediately you can go to work in the process. So actually, sir, we have uh, already a draft IRR and okay. also a draft uh, uh, organizational setup. And also some of this uh, setup has already been filled up. Actually, sir, we have already recommended the chairman and uh, uh, yes. some of this staff. The members. Uh, we How about the staff complement? Yes, yes, staff no, ready na. Yes, sir, re ready na po sir. Right. Kaya lang, sir. We are we still waiting for uh, the recommendation of also the, of the budget because uh, it is included also in the, the budget of 2022, Ms. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's already included in the in the 2022 budget. Yes, yes, sir. Actually, sir, ino na po natin sir sa uh, when we have a presentation last uh, last yeah. po, last uh, uh, last few few weeks ago, sir. Uh, we included the 177 million uh, allocation for the National uh, Amnesty Commission, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. I noticed the uh, presentation. 1,500 MILF lang in yung uh, sabi nyo, prospective applicants. Yes, sir. Why but, is that? But, uh, Out to 40 plus thousand? Sir, that's the initial push. Sir. And then uh, we are expecting that uh, it will be increasing, considering that uh, some of them are are still being, you know, being uh, processed. And uh, the initial uh, estimate is uh, more or less it can it can go up to five thousand, uh, Your Honor. Yeah, but out of forty plus thousand members. Yes, sir. Actually, sir. Uh, meron ng BTA, meron ng barn. Bakit uh, ganon lang kakonti yung ano yung prospective applicants for amnesty? When we have uh, some sort of um, uh, inventory, uh, we have uh, find out that uh, there are only uh, uh, few and a few. Uh, uh, who had uh, been uh, charged of uh, uh, some of uh, some uh, crimes? Okay, but we will. Uh, no, we we. Ah, uh, you're you're still sorting it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, Kasi sir, mayroong, uh, may mga hindi pumasok sa baka hindi qualified. Yes, sir. One thousand five hundred palang po sir ang nag-apply. So far, and, uh, so far, and uh, we're expecting sir uh, during the decommissioning and the validation of the uh, uh, in the international decommissioning decommissioning body. We might, you know, we might have a reserve based of those who have uh, cases, Your, Your Honor. Yeah. Another question, yung ERPA, ABB, meron pa ba yan? May mga active? Yes, sir. Actually, sir, uh, meron pa tayo, sir, ginagawang negotiations with Nilo, Nilo uh, yeah. Player Group. And uh, most of them are also uh, being charged in, in court. And we are expecting also that uh, if we will uh, be able to be successful on having a negotiation with them, some of them have also faced some cases, criminal cases, po, sir. So I assume since na hindi pa nga, hindi pa fully organized yung NAC, wala pa processing na nangyayari. 
we are still proposal. waiting for the approval yeah. of the concurrent resolution. Yes, sir, because uh, the organization of the, uh, uh, the NAC, we will be having uh, 13 local boards, local uh, amnesty boards. All right. Uh, the, we called it LAB. And uh, if we, we you know, the, the, the Congress and the Senate uh, will fully, you know, fully concord with this, we can immediately start, uh, Your Honor. Okay. So how fast can you process? Uh, we can, you know, we can, uh, if you know, the, the Congress, can, we, can, we can already immediately process it uh, within uh, one or two, two months, with, with Your Honor. Yeah, so after the President approves the concurrent resolution? We can, we can immediately start, uh, Your Honor. And uh, how many, how long will it take you to process? Uh, we, we, you know, we, we are estimating that uh, it will take uh, more or less one, one year. One year. One year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's a long, long process. Considering that uh, we will make uh, some sort of uh, validations and also adjudications of those who are qualified or not qualified, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I cannot see any problem in uh, processing your MILF, MNLF, even your uh, RPA, ABP. No? Ang medyo contentious dito yung CTG. Okay. Because there's a, I think sa house yata yung uh, merong proviso na pagka-proscribe na yung, uh, yung terrorist organization, they're no longer eligible. What if, because there's a pending prescription case in uh, at the RTC Manila, hindi ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what if uh, the RTC uh, approves the prescription application of the government against the CPP, NPA, and DF? What happens now, sir? I believe still uh, the the you know the 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 process is that uh, considering that uh, uh, the this uh, this uh, the CDG uh, already. Uh, uh, some sort of renounce their their membership to to the CTG. Uh, I believe, uh, Your Honor, it is uh, also for the act of compassion and also for the purpose of uh, having uh, some sort of uh, uh, strategic ramification of uh, a massive uh, surrender of uh, the members of the CTG. It is really, you know, it's really for the uh, position of the NTF aircraft to really include it, include this as you know, as a, as one of the uh, strategy wherein we can you know we can uh, have a massive uh, surrenders and we can you know we can really uh, say that uh, during the you know, during our uh, uh, local engagement local peace engagement with the mayors and the governors uh, with the NTF uh, we have already you know we have already uh, uh, have some sort of uh, projections of more or less uh, a total of 18 1,433, uh, which uh, 5,959 5, uh, regular NPAs and Indigenous Bayan can be you know, can be accommodated in this. And uh, Your Honor, maybe uh, the the, you know, the members of the DOJ can also answer on the legal perspective of the ramification of this uh, 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 the CTG if the CTG will be uh, conscripted. Uh, so maybe we can request for the for the DOJ to answer. Yes, uh, is there any representative from the DOJ? Yes, because this is a uh, DOJ. Yeah. Yeah. So senior state council. Yeah, Berlin. senior state council Berlin, Berba, are you around? Nakalag in kayo kanina. We want to hear your views kasi ito yung ticklish uh, issue rito. The chair would like to find out anong cut-off date kasi yung surrender is okay yun because they have already renounced. But once, say we have already, uh, the president has already approved ano, the, con the concurrent resolution. This is a continuing process even if uh, after after the approval of the uh, concurrent resolution, you can still uh, accept applicants for amnesty. Gusto malaman yung cut-off date. And another issue here is once the artist, artist Manila 
proscribes the CPP, NPA, NDF as a terrorist organization, then there could be some uh, complications. DOJ, wala man naglag out na ba? Tawagin yun na lang. State Senior Council, Berba. Wala, naka-ano lang siya. Naka-login. Sir, maybe Yusek mapagos yan, considering he's also... Uh... Sige, anybody? Anybody? Yung uh, TJAG. Representative ng TJAG. Naka... Uh, 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 Ay, siya ano pala ito eh. Naka-mute. Pakihan-mute nga, General. Kindly mute your mic. We can only see your lips moving, but we cannot hear anything from you. Tijag. Yeah, I'm mute. Please go ahead. Nako walang. We cannot hear you. Unmute niya. Tijang, we can see you talking but we cannot hear anything. Wala raw siya. Baka naman naka... Baka yung volume. Yes. Naka-unmute na kayo rito. Wala pa rin. Nothing. Meron ko ba i-endorse, Charlie? Kung sino sasagot. So we can... Anybody, anybody who can uh, express some legal opinion in this regard? Sige, you raise your hand. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Please state your name. Yes, you're acknowledged. Kindly unmute your mic. Your mic? Wala tayong makausap. Sir, can I answer the question, sir? Ayan, go ahead. Sige. Uh, sir, uh, the, uh, as per the duration, there, what, there will be only one year for them to apply. And that uh, one year period will start at the effectivity of the proclamation. And the proclamation will take effect only upon the concurrence of the by both con uh, houses of Congress. That is, if you will concur it today, sir, the the uh, will start today, sir, the the uh, effectivity and all the uh, crimes committed prior to this day are included, but not after. So, if there is a proscription by any court after the concurrence of Congress. I think they can still qualify if the acts were committed prior. The acts are different from the prescription because I think the prescription, uh, I, I, unless there is stated there that it is a, it has a retroactive effect, it will only have a prospective effect. So if the prescription will be uh, issued uh, the following day after your concurrence, that uh, I think it is only a prospective effect. Only those crimes committed prior to that prescription will be affected. Affected. So after the terrorist organization uh, is proscribed, no, 
or declared as a terrorist organization, no more amnesty application will be entertained. As, sir, sir, technically, sir, uh, that is the mean. That is the uh, the uh, the uh, provision of the proclamation. But uh, uh, I think, sir, uh, with the uh, policy of the OPAP and uh, by the whole government to to give chance to those uh, uh, to those who, who really want to go back to the port of the law. There, there is some inserted provision uh, with, with, in the IRR which will we try to harmonize with the provision, giving the NAC the authority to determine if they can still be uh, accommodated. Anyway, sir, the, uh, we have, what we have submitted to the RAC, some of them are prominent legal luminaries, uh, even uh, a chief justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, that is, uh, sir, what, what we are telling, there, telling them today, sir, is that uh, we should not limit ourselves with the uh, literal provision of the law, but we should uh, give a spirit to the purpose of the law, that is to attract uh, our brother who, 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 have, uh, who, who, who really want to go back but uh, became short of some, ta of some days. Magkakaroon kasi, sir, nung iba na kinulang lang na araw. And uh, we are leaving that to the uh, to the IRR if they can harmonize it with the provision of the law to in order for the NAC to reconsider that. Yes, we may have a policy issue here, no? Because there's a policy of the government that we don't negotiate with terrorists, Niba. Right? And once the uh, organization is proscribed and declared as a terrorist organization, baka magkaroon problema in still accepting applicants from a proscribed organization and uh, particularly you may name uh, members of that uh, terrorist organization. Kasi kung proscribed na legally, judicially, terrorist organization, will we still entertain? Sir, that's one question, sir, that we will leave, that we will leave to the discussion of the uh, of, of the DAC. Uh, consider it to be to become a uh, 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 Kasai judicial body. The, the NAC will become a judicial body that helps some uh, judicial uh, uh, judicial power. And uh, as we as for the uh, for the for the uh, executive, it has stated its, its policy. But as for the OPAP, we have also stated our sincere belief that uh, we want to give chance to them. And uh, it is for the NAC to determine the, by, by studying the provision of the law to if they can give chance to the uh, to this uh, uh, to this group who, who will prescribe and considering that their activities have been committed prior to this day that you will concur on the proclamation but uh, misunderstanding yung quasi judicial body that you may be referring to baka yung anti terrorism council designation po yon what i'm referring to is yung court issuing a prescription order or declaring the say the cpp npa and df uh, naming members ano uh, thereof na terrorist organization na so are we still entertaining them even after the prescription is issued by the uh, by a court of law, because that will run counter uh, to the policy of the government not to negotiate with terrorists. This is a question of policy. Charlie, can you give your thoughts on, on the matter? Sir, you as I have said by Asaka uh, Javier, sir. Uh, Basically, the, the spirit of the, you know, the, uh, the amnesty is uh, basically to provide some uh, act of compassion to our former rebels. And considering that we have also uh, the uh, history of the different uh, organizations, international terrorists, who have, uh, uh, who have, uh, who have uh, been amnestied by other countries like in Colombia, that the park uh, previously uh, is a member of a terrorist group uh, included also as uh, no, we have we have seen also there are uh, chances that even a terrorist can 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 uh, can be amnestied 
in, for the purpose of really uh, harmonizing the, you know, the, the uh, peace and reconciliation uh, policy of the, the government. Actually, sir, when we, uh, most of us visited uh, Colombia, we have seen that uh, there are also chances that even uh, the terrorists uh, that previously, like for example, the AMI left, that have been previously uh, proscripted as a terrorist before, uh, there might be a possibility that uh, some of those uh, uh, members who really opted to uh, go to the mainstream be given also the chances. That's why uh, our intention, uh, Your Honor, is that the chairman is uh, most likely an opponent is uh, uh, a uh, Supreme Court justice, and, uh, so that uh, he has the, you know, the, the, you know, the certain backgrounds on how we can have a liberal interpretation of uh, the law, wherein we can, you know, we can really give the spirit of uh, reconciliation and unity with the former rebels. We are also exploring that maybe the former ASG members who have, you know, who have uh, you know, uh, your, your honor. Na nakita po namin ako po kami mismo na experience po uh, your honor. Na yung ibang uh, even even hardcore na ASG, ngayon po nasa force hindi ko yung iba. Ano sir nang nagkaroon ng tinatawag na rumbling effects na yung nang nakuha ko po yung number 2 man ng ano ng ng Basila. Yung buong ano po yung buong 30 31 na na abusive na under sa kanya ay nagsurrender po uh, your honor. And uh, kinausap din po namin yung mga countries na kung lahat po meron pong uh, mga kaso yung mga uh, abusayap. Nakita namin po, na, naging, ano po, naging ripple effects. Nakita niyo po ngayon sa Sulu, Basilan, and even dun sa, no, sa areas na Maguindanao, even yung BIFF na we are considering uh, also to be conscripted as uh, abusayap and also the multi group. Nakita po natin, nagkaroon po ng tinatawag na rumbling effects of, of surrenderies. Kung makita po natin ngayon ang, uh, ang Basilan, Formerly, mga more or less 500 ng Abu Sayyaf po doon. Ngayon po talaga, konti na lang po. It can be uh, less than 100. But we, yes. we, you know, we, the OPAP is really committed on really having a program for this terrorist group. Na nakita po natin na there are also valid reasons on their, you know, uh, considering of the hardship and also the, the social conditions and political conditions of this area. So yung po, tinitingnan po namin, Mr. Chairman. That's why we, you know, we, we, you know, we expect na yung pong, ano, uh, the, the uh, National Amnesty Commission will be at white side you know, po, na nakita po namin na they can, you know, they can have put, put some judgment na makakaroon po na tinatawag na liberal interpretation of the law so that we can entice more renderers to come in the pulse of the government you know, policy on reconciliation and unity. And Thank you. Incidentally, I, I received a, a note from uh, Senior State Council Berba, no? hindi siya makapasok. Sabi niya rito, those who are proscribed for crimes under wala na yung 972 repeal na ito, no? RA11479, meaning the Anti-Terrorism Act, may no longer be eligible for the grant of amnesty. As I said, this is a policy issue that must be resolved, no? Yes. At the level of the National Amnesty Commission and the uh, and the President, for that matter, no? Kasi after all, siya yung mag-grant ng amnesty. And I... I agree with the opinion of the uh, Senior State Council kasi kung proscribed ka na, illegal na talaga, and you are de a declared terrorist or the organization has been declared a terrorist organization by the court. Ano? So, how can we still negotiate with terrorists? That's against uh, the, the policy. Very clear yung policy ng, uh, ng state ano? in uh, dealing with terrorists. No negotiations with terrorists. So you have to resolve this, you know. Uh, you don't uh, need to give an answer now, you know, a straight answer now. But uh, while we are discussing this, kailang ma-resolve ito. But the senior state council, yung opinion niya is hindi na pwede mag-avail mag or hindi na eligible for the grant of amnesty once uh, proscribed for crimes under the Anti-Terrorism Act. Now, how are you treating the Abu Sayyaf? Because Abu Sayyaf has already been proscribed, di ba? As a terrorist organization by the court. So are you still, but of course, wala pa naman itong, uh, itong concurrent resolution, but you're still entertaining applicants from Abu Sayyaf, even after the prescription? So actually, sir, ang answer natin, sir, is uh, basically our, tinatawag uh, po natin, sir, na yung ating uh, military operation of winning the peace. So the strategy is really enticing 
all ano, all rebels to come uh, to, to come uh, down and uh, return to the faults of the law. I believe uh, during uh, our time when we were West Wing Kong commander, uh, yun ang ginawa namin po na, ano, na ginawa namin po na, because we learned a lot from uh, the different uh, different countries. Like I have said, Colombia said that uh, part, even part, uh, makita niyo po, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, mas malala po yan sa Abu Sayyaf po, sir. Actually, every day for, uh, ano, uh, they, they, ano, they, they committed uh, kidnappings, uh, every day for kidnappings. And even the may, many, many of them uh, committed massacres. Pero ang ginawa po ng Colombia, in order to, to make their, ano, their, their, ano, their, their uh, country peaceful, considering that uh, part, kung makikita po natin yung uh, ng part, ay mayroon na po yung territorial ano po, eh, jurisdiction actually. But because of the, the, ano, the, 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 ano, the, the policy of Colombia, to really harmonize yung, ano, yung uh, societal divide, ay naging ano po. And then uh, with that, ano, with that uh, introduction that we had with Western Mindanao Command, at saka po dun sa, ano, sa areas ng uh, Muslim uh, uh, communities, uh, we, we, we found out that uh, killing, killing terrorists is not an answer for, no, for, uh, for winning the peace. So what we did is we, we really opened uh, a space for them to return to the fold of the law. And we have seen the, mer the merits and uh, the, you know, the ramification, the strategic, you know, the strategic implications of that. And now we, we saw uh, a lot of surrenders in Sulu, a lot of surrenders in Basilan, a lot of surrenders also with the BIFF in um, uh, Central Mindanao, and also the, the Malte group in, you know, in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Lanao, de, Lanao del Sur. Uh, the, the problem right now is that uh, these people are really committed to have a peaceful life. But because of that uh, conscription, uh, they were not able to regain the political and civil rights because many of them have never, you know, have, uh, have never had any, you know, sir, wala po silang kaso. Pero yun yung ako, because of their, their, uh, they were in a, their organization, because of their uh, familial affiliation and also uh, religious relationship. Uh, ano po natin, sir, is uh, what, what we will do now for these people who opted to make peace with the government. So yun po ang inano po namin na uh, considering that uh, the National Action, uh, National Action Amnesty Commission uh, with the legal luminaries, maybe they can recommend a policy direction for, for the president. So that's why the, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the composition of that, Mr. Chair, is basically uh, one of the Supreme Justice of the Supreme Court, so that they, we have some sort of a liberal interpretation of the, the law pertaining to the people. May I just invite your attention to uh, Section 1 of Proclamation Number 1090. No? This refers to uh, your amnesty for members of MILA. Section 1 ito likewise provides that and it's uncorrected, no, yung proscribed under RA 9372 or Human Security Act, that's still valid, no, it's uncorrected there. Yeah. So Section 1 likewise provides that the grant of amnesty shall not include kidnap for ransom, massacre, rape, terrorism, and so forth and so on. It is likewise specifically provided that the amnesty shall not be granted, ito yung nire-refer ni state, Senior State Council Berba, to those who have already been proscribed or those charged under RA 9372, Human Security Act of 2007, or RA 11479, Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. So, baka kaya reconcile natin kasi ako, I still believe na we should not, uh, you know, uh, go against the state policy of not negotiating with terrorists. No? So, ito yung dapat reconcile natin because uh, Legal opinion ng DOJ, hindi na eligible yung uh, na-proscribe na as members of terrorist organization. And also, hindi naman all encompassing yung crimes. No? Ang covered lang yung in pursuit of uh, a political belief like rebellion or insurrection, uh, sedition, mga ganon. Pero may, mayroong uh, qualification dito, shall not include. And this is as per Proclamation 1090 issued by the President. And uh, kami, magko-confer lang kami doon sa proclamation ng Presidente, di ba? Yun lang naman ang uh, role ng Congress to concur with the uh, proclamation or proclamations issued by the President of the Republic. 
ano nyo lang, uh, anyways, implementation to magmamatter, but there's no problem with the, with passing this resolution as far as the Senate is concerned. We will definitely, and we'll fast track the uh, approval of this uh, concurrent resolution in plenary. In fact, after this hearing, uh, I will already submit a report to, to in, in plenary para ma-discuss and eventually ma-approve even before we go on break uh, after tomorrow. So, yes, sir, we will. Kailan, i-resolve nyo lang yung, uh, yung uh, take this issue na yun. Yes, sir, we will, uh, we will abide with your Again. invitation. Actually, yeah. sir, yung sinasabi ko lang po, sir, is uh, some sort of uh, yeah. separate... I understand separate, your situation uh, kasi separate. we should all, you know, accommodate as much as we can. Yes, sir. Kasi after all, these are fellow Filipinos. And if they're willing to return to the fold of the law, why deny them? But there are limitations. You know? Even under uh, the presidential proclamation or proclamations issued. So we must be guided by that and the state policy in regard to dealing with terrorists. So any other issue or issues that you want to be discussed? Sir, okay, sir. We will yeah. answer. Sa akin, yun lang yun eh, yung sa CTG. Yes, sir. We will abide with the rule, yeah. with oh. the, with the rule of the SOJ oh. and uh, also with the provisions of uh, the law. Sir. So. Unless uh, we have other matters or issues that uh, you want uh, to be discussed from those uh, attending online? Yes, please. The one missing. Can they identify yourself before you? Unmute Mr. and identify yourself. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir, Mr. Hi. Chair. Uh, I'm uh, Assistant Secretary Alex Macaron from the ILG, sir. I would just like to clarify yung term on no negotiation with terrorists. Uh, siguro, ang gustong sabihin lang dyan, na, hindi siguro absolute yun, sir. Uh, meaning, no negotiation, kung may kidnapping, in negotiation for ransom, Kasi kung ang, what is happening on the ground is that commanders are trying to go out of the way to convince surrenderers ng mga terrorists. Sir. And this is the end state is to end the hostilities and for them to come back uh, to the falls of the law. Pag gawin natin absolute yung no negotiation with terrorists, uh, non-ending yung hostilities sa ground. Sir. So I think uh, yung non-negotiation is covers only kidnappings with negotiation for ransom there. Yun lang po yan. You, know, you may have a point there, and thank you for clarifying. Ang sinasabi mong uh, no negotiation with terrorists is yung actual negotiation on the ground. Yes, sir. But for purposes of amnesty, we can still deal with them. That's what you're saying. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. So, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Sir, actually, sir, in order to answer with uh, Asik Makario, because uh, Asik Makario and I are working uh, with the MILF and also with the terrorist group uh, in, uh, in the south. He has been assigned also in Basilan. And we saw that uh, really uh, the peaceful negotiation and understanding and also dialogue is one of the most important thing in, in fighting the, you know, the, the Abu Sayyaf. And we believe that uh, it is uh, no, it's, uh, also... Uh, for the spirit of reconciliation, there is really a need for, for, for us to extend a helping hand to those uh, people that, uh, no. so nakita po namin talaga nung, we, you know, we, we look at them and then uh, we, you know, we, we hear their stories. Actually said there are also uh, some injustices made by some, ano po, some, uh, tawag natin, ano, uh, leadership from uh, the politics and also from uh, the rido that uh, been under, ano, and their only recourse is to to get even uh, with their you know, with their enemies by having a, a an organization going to the to the other other groups uh, it does not push them uh, to, and then we have to understand you know in po nangis ni Asik Makario na uh, we should open uh, uh, this amnesty to all yeah that's that's settled yun lang yung proscribed members yun na lang isort out niyo how do we deal with proscribed members uh, judici judicially proscribed huh? Of course, only the courts can prescribe it. Uh, under the two laws, ano, 9372, as repealed by 11479. So, yun na lang siguro. So, with that, any other? From the other resource persons? Mr. Chair? 
Yes, please. Go that. ahead. Uh, you are recognized. Uh, uh, this is Erwin Kaliba from uh, the Commission on Human Rights uh, Research here. We know very well that... Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Amnesty as a tool for transitional justice is indeed very important, if not essential. While acknowledging the wrongs committed during the rebellion, amnesty is seen as the quick way to achieve uh, justice, including preventing the court dockets from being overburdened. Uh, the, the Commission supports the grant of amnesty for members of MILF, MNLF, and the other rebel groups, insofar as it involves political offenses, not common crimes. The Commission does not interpose any objection so long as the amnesty covers crimes that are committed as political offenses. Of course, if it covers other offenses, then it cannot be rightly called amnesty. We just uh, point out some uh, 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 observations, Mr. Chair. As to uh, the excluded crimes, we know it's an open-ended, but uh, it mentions their crimes against chastity. Um, may we recommend, uh, uh, however, uh, the other forms of sexual violations, uh, such as sexual slavery and forced prostitution, forced pregnancy, and forced sterilization or other forms of sexual violence uh, with, uh, of comparable gravity, uh, gravity is not mentioned. Also, a uh, serious violation of the IHL law. Okay, Mr. Chair, uh, those are the uh, crimes that uh, shouldn't also be included uh, uh, as uh, uh, crimes that uh, as a political offense. Um, also, Mr. Chair, some other observations that uh, we would want to put into discussion. I know it's it's just uh, we uh, as you mentioned, it's just that. Uh, Senate or Congress will concur with the uh, proclamation, but may be cured uh, in the IRR if possible. Uh, there's no cut-off date, Mr. Chair. An amnesty forecloses prosecution for stated crimes by reference to crimes or conduct that took place before as, uh, as, as a stated date. The measures have no cut-off date. How far does the amnesty operate? Uh, we do not know for certain. Uh, in some other jurisdictions, they put a cutoff. Uh, when should be the reckoning period? And the number, another would be, uh, you observe that there, are, there is also no provision on the revocation of amnesty and grounds for revocation. And then uh, how about a program of systematic compensation or restitution? We know, Mr. Chair, that this is an important tool in, in transitional justice, but we would want also to recommend uh, a provision on the Truth uh, Re and Reconciliation Commission. And uh, lastly, uh, the decision of the uh, Amnesty Commission should all be subject to judicial review. This is seen in other jurisdictions, such as in South Africa and in Latin America. That's all, Mr. Chair. Tony, Tony Galiba, uh, may be clarified, yung sinabi niya subject to, to judicial review, ang understanding ko po ng amnesty, judicial notice lang yan, hindi pwedeng i-review ng, uh, ng judiciary yung amnesty granted by the president. It becomes absolute. That's my understanding, attorney. Yes. Uh, we just put forth, uh, Mr. Chair, because in other jurisdiction, this is, this is practice, Mr. Chair. This is because uh, in amnesty, the victims, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, seems to be not part of the discussion, Mr. Chair. Yes. What can be brought to court is the concurrent resolution. <laughs> Kung, uh, yung on, the, uh, on the ground of constitutionality. But uh, as long as uh, yung concurrent resolution is passed, Concurring with the proclamations uh, made by the issued by the president, I don't think uh, the judiciary can still intervene once the president grants uh, clemency or amnesty to the specific in the specific individuals in the Bachali. We defer to the wisdom of the Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Kaliba. Can I Any add other? Chair to that chair? Sige, please. Uh, Sir, it is provided in the IRR, sir, that uh, the decision of DINAC can be appealed only to the president, and only the president has the final say. Because 
the power of amnesty is one of the powers of the president that cannot be reviewed by the judiciary. It is a power granted by the Constitution to the president. No. Mr. Chair. Yes, kasi you can just imagine, pagka lahat subject sa judicial review, ang gulo niya. Anyway, sige, we'll win. Sir, the power of amnesty is an absolute power granted by the Constitution to the President, as well as he has the discretion to grant such a privilege. Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, any other? Yes, please. Kindly introduce yourself muna. Okay, I'm mute. Di kayo marinig. Hold the check. Hold the check. Good. We can hear you now. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm uh, GDG Pino Lopez from the National Security Council. May I just present a point on uh, the upon the proscription of an organization, the members become uh, legal. And so the government now will be able to uh, operate upon them. And then in due operations, we we are not actually trying to negotiate with them. Uh, we can negotiate for their surrender and then uh, let the course of the law be uh, allowed to they be tried and upon, and if uh, the court so will uh, find them guilty, they just have to go through that. But uh, after that, uh, they can already be given uh, they can apply. I, I believe they can already apply for clemency or pardon under this uh, because they have already been subjected to the course of the law. They have been sentenced and they have admitted their uh, crimes. I believe that uh, we, the president can still uh, uh, pass a clemency or pardon to this uh, to this uh, terrorist if ever. That's my point, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, DDG uh, Lopez. Lara, uh, yes. Yes, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, honorable members of the committee, I am Under Secretary Mapago from uh, the Department of National Defense. Uh, Sir, I would just like to manifest that uh, although there, uh, the proclamation is uh, silent on the cut of uh, dates and that uh, there's some uh, proviso there that. Uh, uh, crimes committed prior to the issuance of the proclamation uh, will be uh, only granted amnesty. But uh, I think uh, uh, some of the uh, policy issues can be resolved uh, uh, later on. But uh, as of now, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to express uh, our sincere thanks to the committee uh, on behalf of Secretary Lorenzana for uh, hopefully supporting this uh, proclamation of the president so so that we can uh, give a uh, second chance to uh, former members of the sir i'm specific on the ctgs because uh, uh, i'm the uh, eclip and amnesty Pro, uh, cluster head of the national task force because there are there's uh, an influx of surrenderies and some of them have uh, have pending uh, uh, court cases and uh, we're helping them via the uh, Pau and uh, some of the uh, uh, fiscals around the country. And uh, uh, as of now, we uh, based on the PNP and AP uh, records, we have actually 354 of them with pending cases all around the country. This is only those who, who surrendered from uh, July 1 of 2016 up to 23 uh, September of this year. So, sir, uh, with your support of the amnesty proclamation of uh, the president, uh, we can give them a second list uh, on life, sir, so to speak. And uh, hopefully this will be, uh, we, this will come to pass. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, you say, Ray. Lana. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Hey. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, Asik Malil Felix of the ALG, sir. Uh, in general, sir, uh, for one, we have submitted the DLG's position, but just to uh, wrap it up, uh, it would say that uh, DLG, DILG interpo interposes uh, no objection on the pro proposed presidential uh, proclamations. So that's uh, for DLG, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, DILG. 
Okay na tayo? Sige, Charlie, you give yourself some time to rest a little, ha? You're so overwhelmed ang trabaho mo. Ang dami mong, dami mong roles to play, so give yourself your some Thank time to rest. Thank you very much, Jose, yeah. for your encouragement. You may imagine, paano ko nagpapahinga, paano ko nakakatulog pa? Sir, uh, with the inspiration that uh, the Senate and also the other people are yeah. uh, giving us, sir, it uh, makes us an uh, inspiration. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for your service to our country. Yes, sir. Sige, with that, we will uh, adjourn this uh, hearing and uh, the committee will just prepare our, uh, our report to the plenary. Thank you very much and uh, good day. Thank you, sir. Good